welcome back to the Two Car Garage. I'm Lucas, and well, we've got more uh, more stuff on Kurt's bug here. On the last video, I had uh, shown the stereo that we in installed in this car and talked about the rear package tray and how I've got the speakers mounted and how I've got the sub mounted. And at that time, I mentioned I would go ahead and do a separate video actually explaining how I, I made this rear package tray as well as the support for it. So that's, uh, that's what we're going to do today. So first things first, I, I guess what I need to do is go ahead and pop this back out of the car. I'll get it over to a bench and then uh, uh, we'll kind of walk through my design process with that and then I'll bring it back in the car and show you how I uh, came up with this, uh, this main support structure in the front here. So let me take this out. I'll see you over at the bench. All right. Here it is. So I've got it out of the car. Uh, I've just got it sitting on a little workbench here leaning against the car. And uh, I mentioned in the last video that we made this out of uh, three quarter inch plywood. And uh, the reason for that is we do have the sub actually mounted to this. And the sub, the sub's pretty heavy. And so I wanted something that was going to be able to withstand that. And then coupled with the, the brace that I made that we'll, we'll take you in the car and show you that, I know that we're not going to have any issues with uh, with supporting all of this. Now, if you didn't get a chance to see the other video, um, I'll go ahead and throw a link in the description. I'll throw a card somewhere up here. Uh, and then uh, you can check it out and see the full the full stereo and you know the subwoofer we're using, the speakers and all that stuff. For today, I just want to focus on, on really just the shelf and uh, talk about how I actually got it built and uh, uh, have it mounted in the car. So. That's where we're going to go. Now, the plywood I used is a birch plywood, and uh, I did that because it's a sanded plywood. Uh, typically, the higher grade, I guess you could almost call them furniture grade plywoods, they tend to be much more consistent. They're a lot straighter, and uh, I didn't want to have to do a whole lot of work to this. So that's why I went with the birch plywood. Another reason I went with plywood, uh, beyond just the fact that I'm supporting the sub, on this car, we're going to be uh, running Safari windows, so the rear window is going to be able to be opened. And that just means there's a chance that water could, could leak in. You know, if the window doesn't get latched, um, it could be open and there's a surprise, uh, surprise rain sometime. I wanted something that would be able to, to withstand some moisture. Now, this is indoor grade plywood, so it's not, you can't get it soaking wet, but I found that with like MDF, you know, you can start getting that wet and it crumbles pretty quickly. Now before this is actually covered with fabric, I am going to go ahead and actually seal all the edges and, and seal the plywood. So that'll make it a, even a little more water resistant. Now first things first, uh, once I had my wood selected, I had to figure out how to actually get the shape cut into it to match the car and what I'm doing. And really that was, that was pretty simple. Measured a few things uh, in the car. I measured the width of this little shoulder. There's a shelf on the inside that it sits on. Measured what was going to be the widest portion. And then I just took some card stock here. This is just poster board that uh, I taped together in a sheet that was the same size as the piece of wood that I was going to be using. From there, uh, using a adjustable angle finder here, uh, I was able to put this in the car and square it up to the seat as well as to the sail panel and that allowed me to find the angle of the sail panel which I then transferred over to my cardstock. So I cut the the narrow portion here that corresponds to what's going on down here where it sits on the shelf. So I cut that. These are parallel so that was all measured out and then I just went ahead and just cut an angle on here just to make it actually fit in the car. Okay, so from point to point, it's the correct width. Um, but then I cut this angle on here a little more extreme just to make sure it would actually fit in place. From there, I took these extra pieces and I laid the, the form in the car and then took these extra pieces and then pressed those up against the sidewall and then taped them in place. Now that ensured that I would actually have the proper angle here and then I went ahead and cut this shoulder in there to fit the car. 
Now, once I had the form cut and fit to the car the way I wanted it, I just simply brought it over to my plywood, which was already cut to the width I want, and laid it on here, traced it out, and then using a circular saw, cut the shape that you see. I did uh, drill a hole in the corner uh, with a Forstner bit before I made these cuts just to round off this corner. Just so you know, this is not the final form that this is gonna take. These edges here, even though they have the proper angle and they do fit the car really well, um, in the end, the board's gonna end up being too wide. I don't have a headliner in it. I don't have any insulation in it. And all of that is going to change the shape of the interior. So the plan is to have the board made, have it fit. I had to do all that so I could figure out the mounting system. And once I have the interior in the car, once the headliner's in and the carpet's in and all that, then I'm just going to go back to my uh, paperboard cutout here and I'll resize this. So I'll be able to take off these little extensions here, cut these to actually fit the whatever shape we end up with uh, on the headliner, and then uh, get this all lined up again. And then I'll simply bring it back to the board, trace it out, and then do my final fitting from there. By doing it this way, it allowed me to get the mounts figured out, make sure everything is going to work together, and then at the end, it's really not a big deal to come in and do the, the final fitting. When this is all done, uh, it it's, should turn out pretty nice because we are going to cover this with uh, the same material that the seats are going to be covered in. And once you get those these corners wrapped, uh, I, pr I will end up doing some, some finishing on the corners. And once you get everything wrapped and get it tucked in, uh, it should look like, well, if all goes well, should look like it belongs there. So that's how I arrived at the shape for the for the board here. So again, pretty simple project, you know, a couple of couple of sheets of this poster board, a little bit of masking tape, and just some time with a pencil, and uh, we came up with this. Now, once I got the board cut to shape, uh, I needed to get it in the car just so I could kind of start laying out locations for the speaker, location for the sub, and the amp, and all the all the accessories that are bolted to it. So what I did is I put a couple of uh, little L brackets on the inside, just screwed to the body uh, in the position that would hold this up uh, level where it's actually going to live. And then that allowed me to kind of kind of scope things out. With the board in place and I had the seat up, I could kind of lay things out. We just simply took the speaker rings and slid them around until we got to a spot we thought looked best. From there, I marked the locations and then measured everything to make sure that my speakers are actually equal distance from the center and equal distance from the back and, you know, visually are going to line up correctly. And then uh, just with a five inch hole saw, drilled the hole. You know, the, uh, the hole saw does a really nice job of cutting this shape. Uh, five inch just happened to be the exact right size for this set of speakers we're using. And if you, if you just go easy, you can cut through. You can see there's basically no burning to the wood here. And uh, we, got our, we got our speaker holes cut. After I had that taken care of, we went ahead and uh, figured out where we're going to mount the sub. And you can see that I've got these T-nuts that are uh, being used to hold the, the sub in place. So I've got machine screws coming in from the backside. And uh, the T-nut is a really strong, really strong support point because it's actually pinching the, uh, the plywood. So everything's held tight. The sub is actually hanging from these now and it isn't going to go anywhere. And that, that really kind of lays out the, the plywood shelf. Well, now that you know how I arrived at the shape and getting everything cut out here. Um, once I got everything placed and put in position, the next thing that needed to be figured out was, well, actually how to hold this in the car securely. Now, one of the things I'm concerned with, because the subwoofer is so heavy and it's hanging from this board, even though it's a, it's a pretty heavy duty plywood, I think over time uh, that the board could actually start to sag in the middle. 
Um, normally, if you buy one of these prefabs uh, that they make that already have the speaker holes drilled in them, they just use some L brackets on four corners and that's what holds it in place. If I only had speakers, that probably would be fine. But because of the extra weight, I needed something a little stronger. So here's what I came up with. This here is just a piece of three quarter inch angle iron. It's an eighth of an inch thick and uh, it is really, it's really stout, it's really strong stuff. So I went ahead and cut this uh, to fit the body. You can actually see here that there's an angle here uh, where the sail panel curls back and if I look at it from this position, you can actually see it angles back this way just a little bit. And again, matches the shape of the interior exactly. And just simply welded a tab on the end of that so now I can bolt that to the body. Now, when we were talking about the plywood a few minutes ago, I mentioned that the shape is not finalized because we don't have insulation, we don't have a headliner. All of this needs to change. Well, the same thing applies to this bracket. Because I don't have the headliner in and all the insulation, I could not make this bracket one piece. So I went ahead and made it, made it adjustable. So the bracket on the end here is a separate piece from the from the long piece and is just simply bolted together and I cut a couple slots in here so this thing can actually slide back and forth. There's not a lot of adjustment there but I shouldn't need more than an eighth of an inch to account for the material that goes in there. Um, let, me, uh, let me bring you up close and uh, kind of show you how I actually have this whole thing fabricated and then we'll jump in the car, we'll get it bolted in and I'll show you I'll show you how everything on the inside is working. All right, well here's the adjustable side, uh, up close and personal here. You can see I've got two bolts here. Now these are just temporary. I will be replacing these with uh, some Allen head screws once we put it in the car for real, just to kind of clean things up a little bit. But for now, you'll get the idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get these removed here. All right, so here's the short bracket. You can see that I've got a couple of holes uh, milled into it, so they're actually slotted holes. So once I've got my bracket in place, I can actually slide this end to end. And that way, again, I, it gives me a, a little over an eighth of an inch of, of total adjustment, which is more than we need for what we're gonna be trying to do in the car. Now to bolt this down, <clears throat> because I wanted the bolts to come from the front side, that would have necessitated me using, you know, something like a nut on the back side. Well, instead of me trying to fish a wrench up in here to get things adjusted properly when I install it, I also went ahead and just made a nut plate. It's just a piece of quarter inch steel that's been cut to fit the back side of this bracket, and then a couple holes drilled and tapped and makes it really simple to put this together. So now I can slide all this together. Once I get my screws in place, uh, I can get the bracket in the car, adjust it to the proper width, and then I just tighten down the bolt. Was that necessary? No, but it only took about five minutes to fab this up, so I figured that would be, uh, that would be a little bit nicer down the road. Now, on the top of the long bracket, I do have holes drilled. Um, for the wood screws that are going to come up from the bottom to actually hold the uh, shelf in place. For this end, because I wanted them evenly spaced and I wanted to run a screw through both this bracket and this bracket, you'll see that the hole in the top of this bracket is slotted, again, to allow for the adjustability once this is all, all put together. Because the screw is all the way out on the end, uh, the nut plate, you'll notice, actually has an angle cut into it right here. That was just to ensure that it would clear uh, this hole here where the, where the screw head's going to be. So all of these little things kind of added up uh, to make what I think is a, a pretty, uh, pretty overkill but elegant uh, little, little piece of mounting hardware.
All right, well, now that you've seen how all of this is put together here, let's hop into the car, and I'll show you how I've got everything actually mounted up and attached uh, to the body itself. All right, so inside the car here, you can actually see where I'm going to be mounting this bracket. What we've done here is this is actually a riv nut that I've inserted into the body to bolt things down to. I wanted to use a riv nut uh, simply because it's a machine screw that I can run in and out as you know pretty much as many times as I want without you know damaging the sheet metal. Uh, but also it allowed me to use something a little bit a little bit bigger, uh, a little bit stronger that I know that is going to be able to support the weight that's going to be going on here. Most of the time when you see these kits installed, people just drive sheet metal screws in. While that probably works for, for most cases, I wanted something, again, a little bit more secure, uh, as well as it gives me the opportunity to, to take it apart without, without, again, stressing the sheet metal. So I've got riv nuts uh, for all the, the mounting positions. Before we put the long bracket in, I do want you to take a look here. I do have an L bracket for the rear of the shelf. And an L bracket back here is just fine. This isn't actually supporting any weight. Uh, the rear of the car is where the shelf is gonna sit. There's a little ridge right here. So this is gonna support the weight. Uh, this L bracket is just simply to keep it held fast so it doesn't, doesn't rattle around or move. So now, let's put our, our long bracket in. So I'm going to get the bolt started on the side that you can't see. And now I can go ahead and slip a bolt in here. You can see again this adjustment in the bracket moves, moves a fair amount here. And once I do get insulation in here, I get the headliner in, you know, this adjustment is going to make sure that once everything's tight, I'm not stressing anything, and it is the exact width that it needs to be. So it's pretty simple here. I'm just going to go ahead and snug up this bolt a little bit. Right there, that draws it up to the body. Now I can go ahead and tighten these guys. And now I can finish securing this. And there we have it. So that's, that's our long bracket. So again, maybe a little overkill, but I think the, just the nicety of this whole system is gonna make it a lot easier to install and uh, just gives me some peace of mind on the, on the strength. You know, one last thing I do want to mention before I, I let you go here. Um, once I have this bracket installed, it is set at a fixed height. But because I don't have uh, carpeting in here right now, I needed to account for that. So a couple of things I did. First, I have a carpet sample. I went ahead and measured the thickness of that carpet sample and uh, grabbed a couple of pieces of scrap steel and laid them on this shelf where the carpet's going to be wrapped around just to raise up the back of the shelf to make sure that when everything's put together it was sitting level. You know, so I laid the shelf in there with these brackets and then that helped me find the height of, of this front one. Then because uh, I'm using L brackets on the back, um, you can't really see it right now, but the brackets I'm using, instead of just having holes in them, uh, actually have a slot cut on them. That again makes them adjustable. So once everything is bolted in, you know, with the carpet and, and all that, uh, these will actually be the last brackets I tighten down because I want those to be drawn up tight to the bottom of the shelf uh, and then we'll, we'll bolt them to the body. So for now, that's as far as I can go. I can't uh, I can't drill any holes in the bottom of the plywood shelf for the mounting screws because there's probably going to be some adjustments that need to happen, you know, as far as the front to back position once all the, you know, interiors put in it. And uh, well, that was kind of, kind of by design. You know, the last thing we'll do is get it set in place, and then 
drill those holes. I bet there's probably some things I am not thinking about, and when we do go put this together for the last time, I'll run into a problem. If that happens, that happens, and we'll just deal with it. But, uh, you know, as of right now, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with how things have turned out here. The shelf, plenty strong. Uh, I got all the stereo components bolted in, nice and neat, and uh, you know I, I know this isn't gonna isn't gonna go anywhere. And uh, you know once you put the seat back with the shelf in place, uh, it really kind of looks like it belongs there. You know and that again that was kind of the goal. So anyway, uh, I think that that about covers everything on this. Wasn't too bad of a project. I think I spent you know, probably a day and a half total, you know, between making the shelf and, uh, and fabbing up the bracket. It took a little bit of time, but, you know, at the end, I, I think it's going to be, I think it'll be something nice. Anyway, I could talk all day, so I'm just going to leave you go here, and, uh, you know, we'll get moving on to the next project. Thanks again for, uh, for hanging out, especially if you made it to the end, and, well, really, until the next one, I'll see you around.